1928, silent movie star Charlie Chaplin premiered his new film, The Circus, at Grauman's Chinese Theatre of Los Angeles. The movie, like most of his others, was well received, with nothing seeming out of place. However, in October of 2010, a Northern Irish filmmaker was reviewing some footage when he noticed something odd. At one point in the film, an elderly woman can be seen walking by holding an object near her ear. On closer inspection, the object appears to be a thin black device, resembling a modern day mobile phone or smartphone. This is odd, as mobile phones wouldn't have been invented for several decades yet, so what was she holding to her ear? Well, consequentially, people began to question whether this piece of footage was indicative of something more sinister. The clip received millions of online hits and was a feature on many television news broadcasts, with many wondering if this was actually the first hint of a time traveller in 1928, using futuristic technology as a giveaway at a time where it couldn't possibly exist otherwise. This idea didn't seem totally impossible either. After all, nobody knows how to travel backwards in time yet, but if the phenomenon is simply dependent on a single breakthrough in the indefinite future, then the signs of its use could already be among us. The out of place people in odd photographs didn't stop there. In 1941, a famous picture was snapped of the reopening of the South Fork Bridge in British Columbia, and in the crowd, a very unusually dressed man wearing sunglasses and no hat can be seen among a number of other more typical looking people of the time. Even though explanations for these photographs have emerged in the decades since, it's hard not to look at images such as these and not feel a bit unnerved. It makes you wonder, if time travel has been perfected in the distant future, could its users already be walking among us? Of course, time travel is something that has been dramatised and romanticised by science fiction. It is the premise of a lot of our popular culture. Our will to subvert the flow of time is as old as our belief in just about every other supernatural phenomenon. Time is defined as a component quantity of the universe, a never-ending unidirectional flow of events that has been unrelentingly marching on from the advent of the Big Bang through to this present moment. Based on our current understanding, we believe that the past and present are locked into a cosmic timeline once they have occurred, but the future is more fluid and is dominated by uncertainty and variables. As such, mankind has always been fascinated with both the possibility and repercussions of altering this inevitable flow that dominates our lives. While references to time travel appear in Hinduism particularly, most religions make mention of time as an elusive concept that only God can control. The earliest recorded literary description of time travel occurred in a novel named The Clock That Went Backwards, which featured in the New York Sun paper in the 19th century. However, time travel became much more popular in 1895, when H.G. Wells released his novel The Time Machine, which not only brought the concept into the popular conscience, but solidified the idea of a vessel used to navigate time, named after the title of the book on which it is based, A Time Machine. Ever since, there have been no shortage of urban myths and supposed encounters with so-called time travellers, such as the cases noted at the beginning of this video. It's the same for all supernatural phenomena, but there is something more about time travel in particular that feels more believable than things like UFO encounters and ghosts caught on camera. If human progress has taught us anything, it is that we have no idea what the future technological innovations could be capable of so it stands to reason that as long as the innovation of time travel occurs somewhere along the timeline of the human race, every generation could potentially observe evidence of this. The possibilities of time travel were only strengthened with our understanding of relativity too. When Einstein perfected his field equations, we discovered that time is not this consistent and coordinated flow in all parts of space, but it's fluid and it can be increased arbitrarily by gravity and propulsion. Ever since this realisation, Time travel, in the forward sense at least, has become not just a figment of science fiction, but an extensively observed and somewhat common phenomenon for scientists, and it affects our daily lives much more than you might expect. Forward time travel is a very real and possible concept. While it cannot be achieved by an earthbound observer, it is possible to essentially travel forward in time by slowing down your own perception of time using near light speed velocities, 
due to a phenomenon known as time dilation. Time dilation occurs when an object approaches a significant percentage of the speed of light, or when an object is within the gravity field of something with an incredible attraction, such as a black hole. This occurs because the speed of light, c, the maximum speed attainable for information travelling within the universe, is consistent. Light that is travelling within a vessel travelling at near light speed velocities, say the lighting being emitted from the control panel of a superfast rocket ship, can never increase in its actual speed, and so as the ship moves, the photons aboard the ship are actually covering a greater distance in one light second than photons on a more stationary object such as the Earth. Because C is always consistent, we have to observe this longer light path at the impassable speed of light, so this essentially means that time is moving more slowly for people on board the ship than for those on the Earth, because light is covering a greater compound distance, so more seconds pass on Earth in the same relative increment of time than on board the light ship. Chiefly, because light speed doesn't budge, time budges for it. For the purpose of forward time travel for mankind, it seems that dilating time by moving at incredible speeds is the most plausible method. Time isn't the only thing that is warped as you approach light speed. Your perception of distance also changes. This is a crazy and difficult to understand concept in astrophysics, but it doesn't just occur at light speed. Any pace you move at, be it walking to the toilet or driving a car, has a warping effect on your perception of time and distance. It's just so immeasurably tiny and insignificant that you would never know. But, when you go to walk towards a stationary object within your house, the velocity of your walking pace actually shrinks the distance between you and that object by just over a quadrillionth of a metre. Because light speed, c, is consistent, it turns time, light, speed and distance into one big confusing mess, essentially. While this all sounds completely insane, we have tangible evidence of this occurring too. The International Space Station orbits Earth at about 17,150 miles per hour. This is nowhere near the speed of light, but it is just enough to measure a disparity caused by time dilation. If you were to place two synchronised atomic clocks, one on the Earth and one aboard the ISS, then after a year of the ISS circling the Earth, the two clocks would be approximately 0.01 seconds out of sync. Time dilation is exponential. The more significant a percentage of the speed of light you travel at, the slower you perceive time to be. Nothing with mass can travel at 100% of the speed of light, but if you could find a way to travel at 99.999% recurring, you could travel billions of light years in under a second from your perspective. But for earthbound observers, they would experience those billions of light years as normal years. This crazy effect peaks in photons travelling at maximum light speed, as these do not experience time, distance or speed at all. They begin and end their journeys at the same time from their perception, and travel no distance. This is because the distance they travel from their perspective is collapsed, kind of as if space-time is this one-dimensional expandable hologram that only becomes apparent as you start to slow down. This may sound like I'm going off track a bit, but it is an important concept to consider. Time dilation doesn't have a noticeable effect until you travel at 75% light speed or above, so if we developed a propulsion system that could achieve this, two opportunities emerge, feasible interstellar travel and practical forward time travel. So how would the time propulsion system work as a time machine? Well, if we were to send a ship at 99.999999999% the speed of light, so that's 99 with 8 nines after the decimal point, a 30,000 light year journey would take just under 5 months from the traveller's perspective, and within that time, 30,000 years would have passed on Earth. So we can use time dilation to reach a point in the future within a comparatively short amount of time for us. We can set a date we want to reach Earth at, and using a time dilation calculator, we can calculate just how fast we'd need to travel and the distance required to reach that point in the future. If we then set the trajectory away from the Earth, divide it by 2, and make one half an outbound journey and the other half a return journey, then we could zip off in our space-time machine, and by the time we returned, we would have reached that desired point in the future. This all sounds mad, so let's plug some numbers into the system. If we take that ship we just mentioned, travelling at 99.999999% the speed of light again, and we wanted to reach the year 10,000 AD, we'd need to travel 7,981 years into the future, and 7,981 light years, 
so we could set off at that speed for 3,990 and a half light years away from the Earth, then turn around and cover that distance back at the same speed. For Earth, 7,981 years would have passed, but for us aboard our space-time machine, the distance we'd need to cover would experience time and space dilation and would contract to approximately 0.112868 light years. That's 1,067,817,111,666 kilometers. That's obviously a crazy distance, but because our ship is traveling so fast, it would nail that journey in just over a month. So that's a little over 30 days for us and 7,981 years for the Earth. Obviously, everyone you loved on Earth would have died by this point, but you would have hardly aged at all, and you'd be able to observe and live in a profoundly altered society in the distant future. There's a lot of complicated maths involved with what I just said, so to summarise, forward time travel is possible thanks to the fluid and inconsistent nature of speed, distance and time, interlinking throughout the cosmos. The faster we go, the more time we can pass without experiencing it. The time machine would admittedly be a huge pain in the backside to perfect because we'd also have to account for things like light speed collisions with space debris and interstellar radiation, but by investing in a way to travel at a significant percentage of the speed of light, you are indirectly investing in creating a functional forward time machine, and that is something we are very slowly but surely working our way towards. We already have the technology to achieve 10% light speed, so just imagine what the future could hold. In fact, we won't have to imagine because one day, we'll just be able to get in a ship and blast off to see for ourselves. Forward time travel is something we may be able to achieve one day, so what about backwards time travel? What about our man in the 1941 bridge? How did he get there? Well, when it comes to backwards time travel, we've made significantly less progress. Reversing a time flow is much more complicated than dilating perception, as some believe it to be scientifically impossible, period, due to the principle of causality, the idea that the universe is dominated by the process of cause to effect, and this cannot be disrupted. As such, the only method we have conceived so far to move backwards in time is essentially to cheat, by using what is known as a closed timeline curve a giant space tunnel that links two contrasting points of space and also contrasting points of time. This might be possible through wormholes. A wormhole is a theoretical portal that connects two separate parts of space irrespective of the distance between them. The most common idea on how one might exist is through a black hole. It is a long held belief by many black hole enthusiasts that they may act as gateways to different parts of space time. As a singularity, the focal point of a black hole is an area of infinite density, both space and time behave differently around the edge of the black hole. If two black holes could connect to form a wormhole tunnel, it is believed that they would retain their contrasting points in time. We can then use the aforementioned phenomenon of time dilation to essentially move the entrance of the wormhole into the future and then use that as a future gateway to return to the side that has not been moved forward in time, essentially travelling back to our origin point. We could achieve this by either moving the entrance of the wormhole at a significant percentage of the speed of light, like with our space-time propulsion system, or by placing it within the gravity of a much stronger object, such as a larger black hole. Both methods would cause the entrance of the tunnel to age more slowly, and thus could essentially be moved forward in time. So, say we went on that 7,981 light year journey, not in our spacecraft, but in one side of the wormhole. If we left the exit part by the Earth without moving it, then we could theoretically enter the entrance gate once it has been moved forward through time in the year 10,000 AD, and emerge back in the year 2019. So far, this crazy possibility is our only idea on how backwards time travel may be achievable, but it is not feasible for fixed point navigation. The methods rely on time dilation, and would only allow you to return to the present time from the future when the wormhole system was created, not actually allowing you to travel backwards to a predetermined point. Another issue we are glossing over is the enormous energy requirement to build such a structure. Not only this, but creating a traversable wormhole would require a different type of matter known as exotic matter, which has a negative energy value. 
This requirement for negative energy violates many energy conditions, and while some quantum physics effects can lead to small violations that would make pockets of negative energy somewhat possible, achieving the sheer amount required to create a wormhole system capable of moving in time is another story entirely. This is also completely ignoring the fact that wormholes aren't even confirmed yet, we don't even know if they actually exist. So, when it comes to backwards time travel, the immediate future looks pretty bleak. However, should the wormhole method be possible, it would present some advantages for us as a species. If we could create the system and move the entrance to 50,000 years in the future, it might be possible to analyse Earth in its futuristic state and record some data, and then return to the present where we are able to mitigate to avoid any negative eventualities we discover. This however, touches more on the philosophical side of time travel. If we found our planet was on track to a climate change based doom, then by returning to the present and taking measures to avoid it, we would be inadvertently changing the future we just observed, and it would cease to exist. We believe the future to be fluid and not predetermined, but if we travel to one possible future, does that not then make it the present and set it in stone? And if it does, then there's no telling what kind of paradox the altered course of history to avoid it could create. The results could be as inane as the many worlds theory, and we could simply alter our destiny for the better without consequence, or alternatively the paradox could tear the wormhole system apart and rupture our entire universe beyond repair. We literally have no idea. So these would be some serious considerations we would have to take into account before meddling with our destiny in such a manner. We're also ignoring the elephant in the room here. This isn't purely backwards time travel, this is travelling forward and then returning to the present. We haven't actually traversed the flow of time backwards to reach the past, so if our 1941 bridge man is in fact a time traveller, he must have something more hidden up his sleeve than a set of traversable wormholes. But that's not the issue right now. With technology moving forward so quickly, and ideas like this already on the table, new ways to traverse the timeline further will surely emerge, and eventually, we'll have perfected our backward space time machine, right? We don't know how to navigate backwards in time yet, but if human progress is any indication, then one day the technology may be less science fiction and more science fact. We're dealing with time travel, there's unlimited potential, revisiting the idea of our species timeline. Even if the breakthrough doesn't come for millions of years, future time travellers could still get back to us no matter what age they emerge in. With this in mind, this possibility was put to the test by one of the greatest scientific minds in history in 2009. The late Stephen Hawking hosted a highly decorated and publicised time traveller party for people from the future. He created a large event, complete with hospitality and entertainment, but to prevent imposters, he only released the invitations after the event had passed. These invitations are now freely available, and so the hope is that they will survive long enough in the future for future time travellers to find the event and travel back to it to attend it. And yet, as Hawking expected, nobody showed up. This begs the uneasy question, if time travel breakthroughs are dependent simply on the invention of the technology itself, irrespective of when it occurs, then where is everyone? Why has no one, even if they are from the far, far future, ever come back to visit us? Well, Hawking at least saw this as the first somewhat flimsy line of evidence that backwards time travel is truly impossible, or that it will never be achieved by humans. The lack of time travellers from the future is a lesser known mystery of the Fermi Paradox, the paradox that addresses the contradiction between the expectation of terrestrial and extraterrestrial time travellers, aliens and interstellar astronauts within the Milky Way, and the sheer silence that we seem to be left with instead. If time travel will one day impact the entire human timeline, then where are the time travellers? Not just the occasional spooky photograph, but the coveted visits and the diplomatic missions. Well, the most obvious problem with backwards time travel is underpinned by what is known as the grandfather paradox. Backwards time travel has the potential to violate causality, which appears to dominate the universe. If an effect somehow precedes its cause, then the entire timeline could be disrupted, and no one knows the implications this would have for us and for the universe. This paradox is named the grandfather paradox because it is demonstrated as such. If a time traveller were to go back in time and kill their grandfather, 
the grandfather would be unable to produce the traveller's mother or father, and so the time traveller would never have been born, and is then wiped from the plane of existence. Such is the subject of the world famous movie Back to the Future. But then there's more than that. If the traveller has been removed from the plane of existence, who has gone back in time to kill the grandfather? He now cannot have died because no one existed to kill him, and so the killer returns to the plane of existence because the grandfather exists once again to give birth to the parent, only to kill the grandfather again and the process repeats, and so we become trapped in this indefinite cycle of unanswerable questions. It wouldn't just cause an inconsistency, it would become an irrevocable and indefinite glitch in time with no clear consequence for reality as we know it. With this in mind, it is possible to conclude on a range of potential ideas to the time travelling paradox. Perhaps this is indicative that it is just not scientifically possible to travel backwards through time. The arrow of time is forward facing and totally unbreakable, perhaps even the wormhole idea is impossible. Or maybe backwards time travel will be invented, but for reasons of the grandfather paradox, it is heavily regulated and withheld to prevent catastrophic alterations that could endanger our universe. Maybe the silence of time travellers means that humanity is on the path to be wiped out before we can perfect time travel. Perhaps the absence of time travellers from Hawking's party means we will never reach the point of technical sophistication required to travel backwards through time. Perhaps it is possible, but perhaps humanity will be wiped out by some cataclysmic event or great filter before we can achieve it. Or maybe we underestimate ourselves, maybe the time travellers are already here. After all, there are a few cases which leave one scratching their heads, such as the bridge man. Maybe travellers do return to the past frequently, but just attempt to disguise themselves to prevent unintended alterations to their present. Perhaps the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics is the solution. This theory states that every decision that is made, every variable, splits reality into two alternate tangents that proceed independently from one another thereafter. Perhaps the past is frequently altered, but every time it is, the new reality springs off into an alternate tangent, protecting our own reality from unwelcome changes and isolating the meddling time traveller in a new reality never able to return to their original universe, and there are a myriad of considerations of the butterfly effect to go hand in hand with this idea. Maybe our perception deceives us, perhaps we live in a reality that has been frequently altered throughout history, and things are just the way they are now because of those alterations. Perhaps history is changing all the time, but we change with it, unaware of the structural differences. Maybe Hitler and World War II never happened or existed until a few seconds ago, but somebody, either accidentally or deliberately, altered the past just now to cause that chain of events to occur, and we now believe it to be the set in stone timeline because we are changing with it. Or perhaps you can't change the past, perhaps the past fights back. This is a common idea in science fiction, it may be possible to reverse time, but impossible to change anything due to unknown natural forces. Perhaps our timeline is dotted with events where people have attempted to change the past from what it currently is, but because the past is the way it is and doesn't appear to have ever been changed, these would-be time travellers have all somehow been unsuccessful. Perhaps there is an unknown cosmic force which fights back to prevent our reality from being damaged. Or maybe the simulation theory holds the key. Perhaps we live inside a giant simulation and reversing the flow of time is the goal. Maybe the simulation is aimed to breed intelligence so powerful that it learns how to traverse its own timeline, and when it does, it can escape the bounds of the simulation and ascend to become an overmind in some heightened reality. We could even take this simulation idea further, perhaps reversing time would break the simulation, perhaps the rules that dominate our existence are essential for our continued existence, and by breaking them reality is destroyed. Perhaps in the distant future, someone will perfect backwards time travel, and the moment that they travel back, the simulation will just… Don't get me wrong, all of the ideas I've presented you with today are completely insane. Time dilation, traversing wormholes, literally disrupting the flow of time to an infinite glitch loop. It appears to be one of these mysteries that simply goes beyond the limits of human comprehension. But just because humanity might never be able to understand or reach such a point of advancement, it doesn't rule out the metric entirely. Our species is both vulnerable and regressive at times, 
It would be ignorant to assume that just because we never cracked time travel, some super advanced civilization sitting in the farthest corners of the universe isn't zipping back and forth along their timeline right now. We don't know what we will eventually be capable of. Maybe the man in the photograph is a time traveller, and maybe we will one day learn his secret, but it's just as likely that he could have simply been a man who wanted to stand out and dress differently at a time when mankind looked the same and creative imaginations almost 80 years later filled in the blanks with fantasy and science fiction. There are so many unknowns and barriers to cross before we can even begin to consider this kind of technology as a realistic possibility that it does lead you back to the age old phrase, 